X2 Wolverine's Revenge was a bait and switch game developed by Gene Pool Software and published by Activision. And if you're wondering why I'm already starting off hot with this game, it's because Wolverine's Revenge is a miserable time for a multitude of reasons. I remember getting this game under the presumption that I'd be playing as Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. I mean, any kid would. Just take a look at the damn box art, only to be lied to with a game that's Wolverine is based off of the new X Men comic book design that was being published at the time. Being bummed out at that discovery, I was still okay with it because, well, it was a Wolverine game, something that we had far and few between of. And coming hot off the movies, of which this game has zero correlation to, by the way, Wolverine was by and large the most popular character by leaps and bounds. The main reason why this game has the name X2 on the cover with a picture of Hugh Jackman was due to, well, you guessed it, Activision trying to capitalize on the hype surrounding X2 X-Men United, which would debut a month after this game would release, with the game releasing on April 14th, 2003, and the film on May 2nd, 2003. This movie tie-in completely screwed with Gene Pool, who had already begun development for the game completely devoid of anything movie related. As a matter of fact, this game was originally going to be called Weapon X because the main story of the game revolved heavily around Wolverine's origin. The tie-in also made sure that the game would be released on a hard deadline to coincide with the film release, meaning Gene Pool was on the wire here and the end result for this game definitely shows because of it. I dare say that the only positive from the movie tie-in deal was the fact that they managed to get Patrick Stewart to provide voiceover for- Good God! What is that? Is that- is that an alien? Oh, Professor X, what did they do to you? <clears throat> well, moving on. Mark Hamill provides the voice of the titular character Wolverine as well, in a role that hardly gets any mentions for him, but I think it's one that he did an amazing job at. Not exactly sure why Marvel didn't pursue Mark to be the permanent voice for him, but it was definitely a missed opportunity. Still, we got Steve Bloom, so I guess it's not all bad. He's got the right amount of rough and tough sound for him, and I thoroughly enjoyed him here. With enough time, Mark could have definitely honed a definitive Wolverine, but in his solo outing, this wasn't bad at all. Like I mentioned earlier, the squeeze was put on Gene Pool to deliver a Wolverine game to coincide with X2, and the end result was a game that suffered heavily because of it. Despite a strong opening, Wolverine's Revenge's plot is very average considering what they were trying to do. It feels like a game that got caught up in the license more so than anything, because a lot of the plot just feels like they're hitting beats to include some of the X-Men's most notable villains for the sake of simply doing so without there being much reason for it in the story. I'm all for including characters like Magneto and Juggernaut in video games, but Wolverine is horribly outmatched in these scenarios, regardless of how powered down some of them may be. And the fact that he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and wins, only for these Omega-level mutants to simply just be tossed aside for a virus subplot that is the main story's plot drive, just seems like a disservice to these characters. I dare say that the only character outside of Logan to get any service to him is Sabretooth, but he's barely in the game too. Still a tormenting psycho though. There's also the ending which I have a pretty big issue with. Throughout the game, Logan is trying to find a cure for the Shiva virus implanted in him as a fail-safe by the people in charge of the Weapon X program, but the subplot throughout the game hasn't been assisted and saved by multiple people only for them to give little to no explanation as to why until the end of the game where it's revealed that the reason was because someone wanted revenge and wouldn't allow you to die if it wasn't on their terms. This comes completely out of nowhere, and it was hardly built up that by the time when you beat the game, and that's if you can beat the game, we'll get there, you'll feel so underwhelmed by how much things just simply happen that because of that you're left extremely unsatisfied. Again, the premise of the game in the first three acts, exploring Wolverine's origin and diving deeper into the Weapon X program and Department H, is the better half of the game. I think if they committed more to these plot points versus this haphazard revenge subplot and tried exploring more of Logan's past while also trying to save him from the virus, it would have lended itself to a more interesting and nuanced plot. Even with those differing potential plot threads, however, it still wouldn't be enough to make Wolverine's revenge an enjoyable time. Despite this game having some of the best music for a comic book video game, and some amazing snow deformation tech that really hadn't been seen up until this point, Wolverine's Revenge is a rough game to play. It's your standard action adventure game. You beat up bad guys with punches and kicks, and Wolverine's trademark retractable claws. You have stealth elements as well that are very basic, which provide you with the dog tags. The game's main collectible incentive that offer you more unique and powerful strike moves, which are just special takedowns you can perform on enemy if they align to a certain position and congruent to the player's location. Triple man strike attacks can also provide you with dog tags, but are among the more harder ways of consistently getting them. Comic books are also implemented as well, which are usually just cosmetic, allowing you to change Wolverine to whatever look you want him to look. His main model is still the same though, so don't get used to it. 
Despite some amazing animation work done by the team, particularly on strike moves, it's how the combat functions in this game that makes it so unbearable, alongside something we discussed in our previous review, Blasto. Difficulty scaling. Wolverine's Revenge loves to throw enemies at you in heaps and bounds, and all of the enemies in this game do great amount of damage to Logan. It forces you to constantly seek out enemies with guns, flamethrowers, and tasers, and make disarming them a priority, but even in doing so, it's how the game chooses to engage the player in its combat system that makes it extraordinarily clunky and not particularly fun. In this game, Wolverine goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with one enemy, and while that works fine with one enemy, you hardly ever fight just one enemy. You fight groups. Oftentimes, you're surrounded by swarms of enemies, and since you can only focus on one enemy at a time, even with a target change, you're relying on enemy positioning to occur to constantly spam strike attacks to deal with them in a more immediate fashion to better your odds. This makes the combat more of a test of patience than anything else, but a bigger issue is just how much you get stun-locked by the enemies in this game. They are unrelenting in their attacks, and it makes the game a situation of cat and mouse, constantly having to run away from large groups in hopes that they position themselves in a spot where you can do your takedowns without being put in a stun lock or just constantly blocking until forever. Having attacks that can hit multiple enemies in one go would have made a world of difference, but nothing like that exists in this game outside of the baseball slide. Your claw attacks, which could have been the way of going about this to make combat easier and more enjoyable, are actually useless. Despite the fact that it does more damage than regular fist attacks and kicks, by the second level in Act 1, they become useless due to their lack of consistency. Hitting enemies with a combo using claws, simply put, just does not work. They either dodge it or hit you out of your own moves, essentially making them useless in comparison to the regular fist attacks, which for the most part, work all the time. Another factor in claws being detrimental is the fact that your healing factor will not activate with your claws out. You have to have them sheathed and be out of combat in order for that to kick in. This is the biggest sin you can possibly commit with this character. People want to slice and dice as Wolverine. And despite that, this game treats the claws like they're Tupperware. The healing factor situation, however, presents one of the biggest problems with this game. Because Logan can self-heal, there are virtually no health recovery items around the maps. Finding these containers are as rare as finding Vibranium, and this wouldn't be such an issue if the healing factor healed faster and enemies didn't hit as hard as they do. I don't envy the designers, because ultimately this is a tough call to make. The game obviously needed to have difficulty to it, otherwise what fun would it be if you can just mow through everything as this unstoppable killing machine Wolverine was meant to be? But a fine line between fair and balanced and fun was never crossed here. Once you hit the third act, the difficulty ramps up to such a degree where it feels like you can only get past certain sections of the game out of sheer luck, and that is never a good sign. The hardest part about designing comic book video games is balancing out the power fantasy required to make the heroes feel good to play and presenting enough of a challenge for them that makes sense within the realm of the game without taking away from that power fantasy and making the heroes feel weaker by comparison. Wolverine's Revenge heavily struggles with this. Again, these are just regular human dudes, and they take chunks away from your health. And maybe this wouldn't be so bad if the game overall wasn't so clunky to play with the mechanics the way that they are. Sections of this game featuring wall-mounted high-caliber machine guns in tandem with regular dudes with guns make this game nigh unplayable. The damage scaling is just too much, and having to disarm both the wall-mounted guns and the goons is far too arduous and frustrating because even if you manage to, you still have to sit somewhere or run around in circles until your health gets back up to a point where you can manage taking on the enemies. It's an extreme test of patience that I'm honestly shocked no one caught in playtesting. Furthermore, to reiterate what I said about the claws being useless in this game, in the fifth act of the game, the final one to have levels in it as Act 6 is merely a boss fight, you're introduced to mutant hunters. These enemies are specifically designed to counter mutants and take them out, which means for Logan, they are cloaked, shoot high damage rounds with toxins in them to affect your healing factor, which makes it take even longer to kick in, and they repel claw attacks. This conceptually would work with what I was saying earlier about having things make sense within your game world for the sake of difficulty if it wasn't for the fact that the entire journey of this game feels like you're fighting these guys anyway. I think the best example of everything wrong with this game comes in Act 4's chapter titled Locomotion. Right before you fight the Juggernaut, there's a lone enemy you have to take care of. In fighting this dude, he absolutely hurts. He has a weapon that stuns you on hit and these weird gauntlets that seemingly double up his damage, taking out a quarter of your health on hit. After taking him out, you fight the Juggernaut, who in a full sprint only takes out a small bit of health? It doesn't make any sense. But all that pales in comparison to the gun turret sections. 
There's only two of them in this game, but that should tell you all you need to know if I'm mentioning it. These sections, simply put, are unforgiving. Firstly, you once again take way too much damage. Enemies shred you like Swiss cheese during these sections, and what's more annoying is how floaty the aiming feels, which leads to a lot of inaccuracies you really can't afford. The first section is a lot more forgiving because you can at least hop off the gun turret and heal your health if you really need to and then jump back on. The second one, however, it nearly breaks the game. Unless you take the time to single-handedly remember every single place an enemy comes out from and at what specific time they do, you are not getting past this gun turret section. You can't get off the gun and there is no way to heal. Simply put, you have to hit the enemies before they hit you, and that is absolutely impossible to know on your first couple of attempts, and it is a special kind of frustration that will cause you to turn off your console or play a different game. It is that bad. But the worst part about all of this, what really seals the deal in this game going from frustratingly difficult to changing the disc to play another kind of game awful, is the lack of checkpoints. Levels in this game are extremely long, and certain sections are ridiculously tough, and the sheer frustration of dying in the middle of one of these labyrinth-like levels near the end of it, only to be sent back to the beginning to go through the hoops and hurdles all over again, is insane. How no one thought to add checkpoints in most of these levels, and I emphasize in most because there are checkpoints, believe it or not, but they seemingly forgot to add them in the levels and chapters that really needed them, particularly in the void, boggles my mind beyond comprehension. This game is extraordinarily brutal and massively unforgiving. Despite it being a superhero game, Feeling heroic is about the farthest thing you'll feel when you're playing Wolverine's Revenge. And this is a game that feels like it is constantly fighting against itself, trying to do way more than what it's capable of. From clunky mechanics, egregious difficulty scaling, supreme lack of checkpoints, and a story that had some potential but ultimately failed to live up to it, much like the game itself, Wolverine's Revenge is a rough, rough time. This is not a game that I would recommend playing without cheat codes, because honestly, playing this game as god mode is a lot more manageable than playing it normally. What the hell happened here? Well, I can tell you what happened. Activision screwed with Gene Pool, and the end result was a game that could have had a lot of love and care go into it and be really good, but ended up being a tight squeeze that was just thrown out into the market to capitalize hype on the film to get kiddies to buy a video game.